he lifted up his eyes to heaven. You see, heaven is a place. Heaven is a glorious place. It's the place from which he came. Now notice verse 5 in the passage. Glory I had with you before. He came down from there, you see. But his mind is always there, and his mind is always on bringing his people there, and that's what this prayer is all about. Lord, you're glorious. Glorify yourself. Glorify me. I'll seek to glorify you. But overall, the intent is to bring these people to glory, to give them something of that glory now, but at last, that we may all enjoy the glory together in heaven. He lifted up his eyes. Now he says, in this hour, I have to concentrate on what will bring about that glory. I need to persevere all the way to the cross. I need to bear that cross and its suffering and then to rise from the dead. That's what this hour is all about. And when I have done in time and space, in this hour, what has to be done, then glory will reach its apex. Glory will reach its fullness. So in this hour, Jesus was concentrating on what has to be done now, but he had eternal matters on his mind. Verse 2, he says, I've come to give people eternal life. Not more hours, not more years. I know many of us are thinking, here we come to another year. I wonder how many more years I have. Jesus says, I'm not worried about giving you so many more years. I'm worried about giving you eternal life. And I, I use the word worry there for the carelessly. But my, my concern is to give eternal life. I have authority over all flesh, he says, over mankind. And those that the Father has given to me, that is, those who will believe on me, I intend to take them out of the hours, out of the years, and glorify them with eternal life. That's what I intend to do. His prayer is, Lord, let us bring that to its fullness. To its concluding point. He came then expecting to do something in a certain hour. From the moment of his conception and birth up to this very point where he's going to the cross. He came to do something and that was to save sinners. To shed his blood, to pay for their sins. To take their place under the wrath of God. To defeat death and give them eternal life. He never doubted for a moment that he would do so. So this eternal life that he gives then, in a sense, does not start when you die. I think it's a very important part of this passage. What does he say to them? This is eternal life. Not this will be eternal life. Not you will someday have eternal life. But this is eternal life. That you know the only true God and Jesus Christ who he has sent. If you know the only true God... Not an idol, not an imaginary God, quote unquote, of some other religion, but the God of the Bible. If you know the only true God and you know Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. That's what I mean about His drawing you into the sphere of His glory. Just at that point, you begin to have eternal life. So that when, when death comes around, whether it's somebody who wants to kill you, or it's just that uh, age catches up with you, you can say, you don't have any power over me because I have eternal life. You say, I have the glory of God. This is where I live. And I only have a little bit of it. Death is a welcome entrance into the fullness of it. 